Okay, go ahead. It's recording now. Jake, I just wanted to um, ask a, a follow-up question there as well um, around if there's anything on the list that's not there for you, anything that, that feels important that is missing. I was trying to think about that um, when, you, when you gave us the, the couple of minutes there. And I think that I would like to take some more time um, and, and get back to you on that and, and certainly do want to follow up um, because I, I think that there's a, a lot of different angles to look at this, look at this from. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, I'll be real quick, Andra. On, on the actual board itself, not the advisory board, but the actual group that's putting together the CCA, how representative is the community in that group? Yeah, so, you know, that was something that we discussed at the last meeting. Um, and the board itself is going to be appointed by each of the you know, executives in charge of each community. So in Northampton, that's the mayor. In Pelham, it's uh, their select board. And in Amherst, it's the town manager. And um, we will probably have two directors on the board and we can't really specify, but it's going to be a pretty deep dive for even people who are knowledgeable. You know, I've been learning about this from scratch for the last three years, and I still don't know anything about actually implementing this. You know, I understand it all in theory. So, um, that's why the education and, and developing leaders through other steps is so important because that's, that's how we'll be sure that we're really representing the communities but, um, and, and why we want to make the citizens, rather call it residents advisory committee be really representative and strong. So it has influence um, on the board. And there will be um, three or four, we haven't decided, people from the advisory committee on the board at the table, but not voting members, right? That, that was a part of our conversation before. And um, but being a part of the discussion is going to shape decisions. We, we know that from research we've done um, with communities in California. Um, that answer your question? Yeah. I, I mean, my, my hope would be that the education that you're talking about in four or the participation on the advisory board um, would result in educating people um, so that as actual board members for the governing body open up and terms end, there'd be a pathway Exactly. For people to get to that governing place because both you and I, I mean, there's a certain, there's an empowerment about being a decision maker and I'm not poo-pooing an advisory board and I'm not poo-pooing discussions and being, you know, in being in, and, and then the impact that conduct that discussions can have. Um, however, the decision makers are the, board, not the advisory board, and providing a pathway for a, mo a broader part of the community 
to gain whatever knowledge needs to be gained to govern, I think is a really important, really important thing to have. Yeah, I am really glad, Stephanie, that you noticed it wasn't recording and that it is now. Um, so I can say to Jen um, that I'm missing her voice here, um, and particularly about this issue of governance, um, because she really pushed that issue. And I, I hope that it makes sense um, that, you know, by, by, we have to put this into like the legal document that, that shapes how the CCA is going to be run for, you know, to be sure that it really can happen, that it really will be happening. Yeah, Gazit Haya. I just wanted to remind us that there's absolutely no reason why there couldn't be someone who um, shares the identities that are described in number two, who's also someone who's capable of engaging in technical dialogue. And so um, a, a priority could be for the board to um, make an effort to choose when they're choosing from qualified folks who have the technical experience and expertise to prioritize folks who simultaneously are uh, renters or people of low income or people um, from the BIPOC community because there's tons of intersections there and we don't have to assume that people with the identities listed on number two are not also capable of engaging in technical um, and you know conversations that necessitate some sort of expertise so just wanted to offer that. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. And we also, you know, are, are working from what we know right now um, and knowing uh, what we've had to learn to get as far as we are. Um, it's, you know, just want to like validate what Cedric was saying, there's so much to grasp about what the CCA can be for the community. Um, it kind of takes living with it for a while. And there's lots of people who um, could be doing this. And I would like to, to put our energy into developing a very diverse pool of people who could step up starting now, you know, even before we start the CCA. So I just wanted to um, jump in to say that um, Alini is in a similar situation to Gazika right now where she's uh, juggling childcare. So she'll jump in when she can, um, but we can continue with the discussion. Um, we have about five more minutes if folks have other thoughts or things they wanted to circle back to on this particular um, part of our meeting. I'm particularly curious about um, the question, Lauren, that you put to Jake about what's missing. And I know it's hard to come up with what's not there, um, then bounce against what what is there? Um, but there's really no questions or ideas that are not welcome. <laughs> all, all is welcome, even if you think, well, this might not even be related. Um, it's probably still important for us to hear. And if Jake, you're still thinking, I remember Cedric had um, something he wanted to circle back on as well earlier in the conversation. So Cedric, if you wanted to jump back in, please feel free.
I guess um, while folks are still thinking, I'll just um, note something that came up for me um, when, when Cedric was talking um, around the importance of um, understanding where the where the decision making power lies within um, in the community, for instance, around the apartment complexes and working with landlords and property managers um, to encourage them to participate in the, the CCA and also to um, take advantage of the programs that the CCA might offer and to uh, ensure that those the benefits of those programs go toward their tenants. Um, I think just hearing that perspective, that's something that I would add to this list. Um, so just something to offer there. Jake, did you have any any um, awakenings there? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess we could expand that energy efficiency um, topic to other areas that could could um, be of, of benefit. And I guess I, um, that might be uh, using some of the profits for, um, I don't know, uh, updating, you know, renovations to, to different homes or, or, again, things that are tangible that might be uh, quicker to produce. So kind of going off of that. Um, and I, I think um, with solar, there are just so many unintended consequences that come from it. So I guess continuing, continuing to look at this and review um, what the best practices are, um, which I, I guess as a board, they're going to be doing anyway uh, with, with uh, community involvement. So that's just something I, I think that um, Dwayne spoke to, uh, for example, the amount of land that's required for solar. Um, we, we all want to be pro-solar, of course, but there are these uh, effects that might not be as apparent. So continuing to review, I guess, uh, best practice implementation. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have maybe time for one more quick comment. Um, so I just want to offer it back up to Cedric or Jaden or Don. Um, if you have anything you'd like to add before we move on to the next part of our meeting. Yeah, Cedric. Hey, um, my, my last thing was, um, if someone could just provide me, cause I, I, I do like, it sounds great, two and four and I mean, the fundings and every, I think they're all sound great, but just provide me in a way uh, like to like, for example, like what, like educational, like what are, like what actually practically am I'm going to gain from like, I guess from number four, for example, what education am I going to gain from how is this helping me in the environment? as well as the community I'm in, in the environment. If there's like just a quick, like, you know, oh, it helps with, you know, heating or um, like in the winter time, it's, you know, you, it's cold, but you get good heating or I don't know, just something that, you know, that it was like, okay, my house is freezing all the time or this and that, and I'm still gonna save money in this way or, cause I, I don't know, right now it's like, how is, is how is my community and my home going to help me or what are what education am I going to learn from this just one or two examples so I can think of one Cedric like um there's a lot of different ways to use solar to you know to actually without owning it and um so understanding the different ways to do that could put the decision making in the hands of the community you know a whole apartment complex might decide we want to push the owner to you know use this space over here that no one's using for anything or cover the parking lot with solar that then is actually 
used to um, when it's you know generating electricity in you know use it in our homes or to you know light a community room that doesn't exist or you know uh, something that helps you know communally to to enhance life or, or bring some cost down. So there, there's an example. So it would be kind of like, what, what could we organize for um, as tenants or, um, you know, in Jen's case, condo owner? Um, cool, I like that, because now I could tell, you know, we, we go into the family and then, you know, cause folks is out there thinking about, you know, they phone bill, they can't like the kids have after school or lunch fundings and things like that. And then it's like, oh, I get to lose, like this is helping me lose $30 off my bill. Like that's all I'm looking for is like, so what can I tell someone practical to like, what is gonna happen in the next five years or for the next five months, you know, this is obviously 2020 is 2020. So people are like, what are the answers and things? So I, I was just like, practically what's something, you know, if I go and tell somebody, hey, the, the CAA or these projects are happening, they're gonna be like, well, what does that, pro like, that's cool. They vote in or they're gonna educate me, but what I'm gonna, like, what is, how is this actually helping me for today not to be I don't want to be self-centered or anything but it's, mm -hmm. it's just something that um I'm, I'm like I know if I go back to the apartments or complexes like that I'm like well how's that going to help you know these bills that I'm talking like you know going with and things like that so thank you I like yeah. that provide I mean that's like an idea there's there's a just there's a lot of possibilities how feasible, how, how realistic they are. I don't know, or how soon they could actually happen. We don't know those things, but if we, um, you know, can all like put our heads together and decide what's, what would be the first thing we'd like to try and, and it, you know, find out if it's something we could do. If not, then, okay, what's the second thing? Then, then, it does take education to get to the, what are the options? And then, but, you know, like, I don't know, is there a tenant organization? Is there, a, you know, apartment complex wide um, resident organization? Or is that where, you know, this work would have to start just to have a way to gather and talk about well, what is important? Maybe it's got nothing to do with energy, but let's just start there and have people have a voice. So. I really appreciate that connection to sort of um, tenant organizing and, and um, governance too, Andre, because that's actually an issue that's come up in a lot of our task group meetings so far, not just with this group. Um, and I think it really speaks to what Cedric's saying around like how how will this make a difference in in the day-to-day -day lives of the folks living in the apartment complexes, for instance, and and when it comes to things that have to that take convincing a property manager, then organizing is is important. So yeah, both of those comments are really well taken. So I want to move us along. Oh, Gazikaya, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to loop back to Cedric's initial thought about how the landlords interplay and like one of the pieces about if this does end up being short term more expensive and it's something that landlords are paying for, it could end up like leading to increases in rent. So there's so many layers um, that like, you know, long term, the profits may be able to be used for community projects, but like Cedric was saying, you know, so many of us just have to pay like this month's bills. Um, and it's something that I hope the board will stay really present with. 
Thank you, Shaila. Um, I want to uh, just ask you if you want to take us into the next section of our meeting. Sure, yeah. Um, so now that we are on our third meeting and wrapping up this uh, process together, um, we just wanted to give some space for um, everyone to share about how this has this experience has been for you. Um, we have heard from across the task groups that it's been pretty different from other town planning processes. Um, so we wanted to give people the opportunity to share, um, did you feel it was worthwhile to participate in this? Um, is there something that made it feel um, more uh, positive or was there something that made it feel um, difficult and um, just any other uh, ideas or thoughts that you want to share about being a part of this process and experience um, over the last three meetings. So we're going to give everyone three minutes again and um, if you don't want to share, of course, you can pass, but if you'd like to, um, we'd love to hear. I'll just add to Kaya's original framing to say um, if there were things that made the process difficult, what could make it better in the future? Maybe our co-chairs want to kick it off. Andrea or Dwayne, if you have thoughts or sorry, fire truck going by, um, <laughs> um, thoughts or reflections that you wanted to share with the group about how this process has been for you. I guess I can just reflect that. Um, um, I mean, that might, this role in the town uh, energy committee is the first experience I've had with town governance directly. Uh, so I, I don't know, uh, um, I can't really compare this process with others. Uh, but that being said, I, I do understand um, uh, that um, it's somewhat unusual to, to bring together um, community leaders um, to at an early stage, particularly to really help to um, understand and, and hear from and um, be moved by um, uh, community leaders from a diverse group of community leaders. Uh, so really appreciate that. Um, and um, I guess maybe while you're reflecting on how things have gone, um, you know, maybe also um, reflect on how we move together, um, continue to move together um, as we um, finish the plan, but then more importantly, um, implement the climate actions that we um, need to take um, moving forward, the CCA and, and others. Awesome, thanks, Wayne. 
Andrew, did you want to add anything to that or share? Yeah, that? I guess, um, you know, yeah, Dwayne and I are on this committee, but um, we have, you know, like, well, I'll speak for myself. I, I started out learning about the CCA stuff and climate in general, you know, really from nothing, um, just um, basically my, my son said, what are you doing? You know, this is my world. Why aren't you working on this issue? And um, so I had to, <laughs> and uh, that's when I joined Mothers Out Front, which is a climate organization that doesn't try to necessarily be experts, which was a good, good fit. Um, so it was sort of a baby step. And then I got more and more involved. And so, you know, I feel like if, you know, even one person out of um, this, you know, whole process of, of involving you all ended up being interested enough to continue that would be really a, a great thing um and i have all sorts of ideas of how we can continue to work together either as a part of the town process or outside of the town process because honestly you know i i come from both perspectives i'm a, you know an activist and i'm doing this town work and sometimes it's important to push from the outside um, and you know our town needs that needs needs voices that speak up and and say you know whatever's true for you and um, organize if you know, your voice isn't enough get more voices <laughs> so I'm, I'm really hopeful that, that this process will lead to more of um, really deep community involvement. It's been very exciting and I, I feel like bragging, you know, about how well Stephanie and Zichaya and Lauren and Jim have made this happen. Um, so that's part of my experience. Thanks for sharing that. Anyone else? Jake, Don, Cedric, Jaden. Yeah, Jake, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I've it's really been a, a great experience for me um, and educational on two fronts, um, learning about uh, what others' experiences are. Um, it's been eye-opening for me. Um, and then educational on just knowing what the process would be like to create this uh, CCA um, and, and knowing that it is possible for other towns to go from uh, utility, privately owned utilities to more of a, a public community owned um, uh, utility, I suppose, and just understanding that that is possible. And it seems like, um, well, it, it's, of course, very um, challenging, but it's, I think, where we're headed, um, certainly as a, as a state, it's, it seems. So uh, congratulations to, uh, to the panel and the board here uh, for taking the steps and really being leaders in this effort. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. I'll check in with Cedric and Jaden since you're not on video. Um, yeah, I can go. So I think that like this whole, like seeing this whole process work out has been really like educational for me. Cause I don't know for like some of you guys who don't know I'm in high school so I've and like I've never seen anything like this before I don't have any other experiences to compare it to but 
like all through middle and high school, I've been very active in like climate stuff and social justice stuff. So it's just really incredible to me to like see how it all works out and like all the little details. And like, I came into this not knowing anything about this topic, but I feel like I have learned so much from just like these meetings. So I think it's definitely like a very positive thing to see. That's great, thanks Jaden. And I wanna just follow up and ask sort of, what are some of the, the biggest things you're taking away or um, how are you gonna, um, yeah, what are you taking away from this? What is the, the biggest thing you've learned? I think definitely one of the biggest thing I've learned is like, I kind of like being on these meetings, it kind of helped me like put together like how everything fits together. Like, cause I think before this, I wouldn't really be able to connect how climate change and like energy is connected to like landlords and renting. Cause you kind of don't put those problems together. But then when you look at something like this, you see how like there isn't just one problem. They're all like, connected and linked together and you can find solutions that fit both things and you have to kind of figure that out. So I think before, if I was thinking about energy, I'd just be like, oh yeah, solar panels for people's houses. But you see how it's like more complicated than that and that's where everything else comes in. Thanks, Jaden, that's a really great insight. Um, Don, Cedric, Steph me as well. You're welcome to jump in if you have thoughts to share. I'm just going to wait until others comment and then I'll save mine. Sounds good. I was waiting for Don, but I'll go first then. Um, Thanks, Cedric. <laughs> I'll just go. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I want to jump on Jaden's point uh, with it's not just about solar panels and energy. So uh, that that was what this brought for me, and I, which I kind of expected. Um, uh, open door, you know, the door, a foot in the door. Uh, I see that it's a process for sure. And uh, I, I love the the thought and the, and and the empathy and where we're going, and especially in uh, diverse communities, Black communities, Latino, other uh, other communities as well. I think also just continue to like. I, I think this has been a common theme for me, though. It's just what how you know continue to ask those questions of what's what's next and practical maybe uh you know plans of giving things uh how we can save energy today or you know i know there's things out there but now i'm going to look for it more and you know like i don't know there's like just cool ways and creative ways to 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 inform you know, uh, the young people as well as just the community. So, so that's uh, what I like the, the door being open to is that, is that type of things to, so we can continue to uh, help our community and save energy and, and live a much more healthy life. And that's what we all, you know, at the end of the day want to do is uh, move, live, live a healthy life. So, in all ways, so I, I thank you for that that open door. Uh, I would and just continue to love to be on another one of these to 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 push and press these questions and 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 hear it so we can go back home to our people and and tell tell others. Awesome, Cedric. I really appreciate you um, using that metaphor of an open door, and it's. It's opening, right? It's not there all the way, but this is the first step, and and hopefully, the process of moving forward is going to continue to open that door. And I'm just curious, um, 
sort of reflecting on the, the original questions that we proposed, what would have made this process better for you? Uh, what I think, I think just again, just the process would have been better for me. Uh, I think, I think just more uh, what can what can help me today. What is like? How is it? You know, what or what are the effects is happening? In what are we not doing? That's that's what led us to. I, maybe we have talked about it. Maybe maybe it was the length of time and things like that. But like what, what you know? Sometimes I'm not. You know, I've also came in. I, I, you know, it's been again a crazy year. But I've came in in the middle of these meetings too. So I've been like, oh, let me catch up. So I was doing a lot of catch up. But in this moment, just really, I feel when I when I was missing was something where it was like, okay what's happening right now and how are we an answer to a problem i know there's a problem mm -hmm. but how are we like how are we how is this answering to the problem what what is what is the steps or what or maybe what are the things that we can at least prevent right now that can help you know i can go to again our neighborhoods and be like hey oh y'all need to you know for example we say turn your lights off don't use the water all the time stop like wasting like those type of things that i would like to kind of know and we we did it a little bit in the first day i remember like oh open your windows instead of using air conditioner and things that is what something i was thinking we were trending towards and of course like there's but i also learned there's a lot to you know a lot of factors that's what Jaden was talking about where there's a lot of factors to that so i, I definitely was like oh there's so many other factors in voting and i you know i didn't know you know do we have committees and things so that's amazing and you know for me it's always okay what's happening up high but how do we always bring it back to earth you know because mm -hmm. we go back to what am, like how what what am i going to go and take away from this and do right now and help so i can so i can go tell the people, be the Paul Revere and be like, yo, <laughs> we got energy. We need to do this, yo. This is what we're doing. We need to stop this or, hey, we can do this now and and things like that. That's all. So, I, but it's a lot. So I, I, it's hard to cover everything. So I, that's why I think this is a continual thing. For sure. I really appreciate that perspective of just wanting to ground things in 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 actions that are tangible and that are going to have an impact right now and being able to connect those to the bigger picture as well so that you can be an advocate in your community. That's what I hear you saying is you really want to be an advocate in your community and that's really great. So thanks for sharing. Don, did you want to jump in? I, I I know Alini is still with us, but she'll jump in if she can. So I'll be brief. go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so this is my first foray into um, doing any kind of work in the in in the greater Amherst community, and and I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm on boards for Brookfield Farm or for double-edged theater, but I haven't really done anything for the town. Um, but what I really want to say is I, I, I want to thank Dwayne and Andra for, I mean, my impression is, and, and Stephanie, for making this, for, for actually actualizing the term community, um, which is in this whole process. And making it alive and real and not just a label. Um, and the inclusivity, the um, it's been well run. And my only, if you were to ask me the only negative I have, I wish we weren't in a pandemic. I wish we could have all met in a room and and exchanged ideas and really been able to respond in a less, kind of stilted way. Um, 
I think I'm zoomed out between my, my job and these things, but it's been wonderful. Thank you. And that's my reflections. Thanks, Don. I think we're all with you wishing that we could be there together in person and not interfacing through a screen. Um, and I also just want to point to the, the sort of trend, it seems, in the room of this being a first experience for many folks in, in interacting with town processes. And I think that's really that's really telling in and of itself. Um, so just thank you all for being willing to spend the time with us and um, especially on a Sunday afternoon when it's a beautiful day outside um, to, to make progress on climate action in town. It's really inspiring. Um, so we're just at the time where I'm gonna turn it over to the co-chairs to talk a little bit about next steps and um, continue the conversation around advocacy and organizing and, oh, but first. I promised Stephanie would would have uh, a word, so please go ahead, Stephanie. Sorry, I can I can make this brief. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> I just, um, I, I you know I have worked for the town for over twenty years now, and so I have been involved in town governance and I've worked closely with committees, especially the Conservation Commission. And I just want to say that this is different. Um, I, I think there are there are many ways we can improve it. I think there were many great things that happened from it. Um, I personally really want to thank the Linnaean team and especially Gazi Kaya for all the work that they did um, to really bring the community leaders and community members um, into this process. And I think to um, Cedric and Jaden's point and really um, everybody's point that it's, it's, um, it's something I hope we do a lot more of. Um, I love, um, Cedric, your desire to get more involved with the community and really to be a, you know, a sort of champion of, you know, some of this work. I, I hope, I really hope that it will bring you um, to be more directly involved in, in, you know, in a committee, maybe the ECAC, you know, it would be great if you would be like one of the next members on the Energy and Climate Action Committee. Um, I, I hope this sort of opened up a door for that for that kind of um, engagement and um, you know for everyone involved I just um, really thank you for taking the time and it's been really positive um, experience and um, yeah I just want to thank you and I I, I you know it, it was what it was because of all of you and your willingness to be here and share you know otherwise it would have been just a few of us <laughs> and so thank you um, and thanks Gazi Kaya for all the work you did. I just wanted to say real quick, Stephanie, that um, Cedric just started last month on the Human Rights Commission. So, hey. sure stepped up and um, yeah, appreciate him a lot too and everybody else. That's great to hear. So I just want to make sure, Alini, if you're able to jump in and say what this has been like for you, you can interrupt. No. Yeah, she she's not right now, but um, but I will definitely get her feedback and communicate it. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's anything else, having heard other people that anybody wanted to add, I want to offer you the chance to do that now. So, hi everybody. Hi, sorry. Yay. I'm still driving. Sorry, I was listening, but I'm driving. I'm having a little bit of a hard time. Um, so, I just wanted to say that it's been really helpful to be part of the group and just be aware of um, what is happening in the community and ways that the community is looking to work with people to make it more of an equality between um, the classes and the races. So that everybody has the same access um, to energy station um, resources and other resources as well. So it's been really an eye-opening experience. I'm sorry, I didn't contribute much. It's been a little crazy.
That's totally a great. Thank you, Alini, for sharing. I think um, Andra had to step away for just a second there. Um, so, do, oh, and Don, yeah, Don had a final thought. I no, 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 I don't worry. I didn't want to disappear, but I have to leave now too. So I wanted to thank everybody and sign off. So thanks. Yeah. Great. We'll we'll follow up with yeah. next steps, Don. I hope thanks so. for coming. I hope so. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Um, can can you hear me if I'm not using the uh, headphones? Um, so one one next step. Um, I think I mentioned before that this group of activists who started this whole idea, CCA, um, is um, still exists, even though some of us have gotten into you know the weeds and really involved in the, the town stuff. And um, one thing we're thinking is we don't have to wait for the whole electricity thing to start. That could be a year, year and a half, two years. We really don't know when that will start, but we can al already start thinking about other projects that um, you know the, the community could um, put money to and, and start like, what, what would we want to do first? And it would be with these three towns, um, Northampton, Amherst, and Pelham. Um, and I would just love for like this group or, or you know, it, 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 across the four different task groups um, for the community members to tell, you know, come together and, and figure out what priorities across the, the different sectors, you know, the people talking about buildings, the people talking about transportation, um, and, you know, come, can give, give us some ideas and, and work with us if we're going to, like, organize landlords first, you know, how do we do that, and, and you know, who, who does it, and, and how can, People who don't live in the apartment complexes help, and or do we have to stay out of it and you know let the residents do it? That that kind of really organizing thinking. Um, we we need some come down to some really concrete things, um, and then the other thing is there are basic things that individuals can do, or that. Uh, groups of individuals or neighbors together can decide, okay, we're just gonna, you know, push to get a community garden going here. Uh, we can't grow our own food in our backyard, so let's do this. Um, or anything else. Um, so, I, I don't know, I, you know, that's, that's like m with me, me with Andrew with her organizing hat on. Um, and meanwhile, the ECAC will be um, kind of writing this up with Lauren and Jim and trying to get our ideas down on paper and prioritized. And I do think that we need to ask for the community members to come back and weigh in again. Uh, so. I hope that we can make that happen. I don't know what the grant money, you know, allows for, but so. Do oh I... yeah, that's part of the plan. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. Wait, other next steps. Yeah, I, I, I um, just add to Andra's reflection, reflection, my own reflection on on uh, just what I heard in the last round. I uh, just really wanted to pick up on a couple of things that um, uh, Cedric had mentioned, and um, uh, I think. Um, um, Jaden as well, and something I've been sort of talking talking about at the uh, at the um, action committee, the, the uh, energy and climate action committee, is that technology. It, it, it's much more the more uh, the challenges that we face are not really the technical challenges. Um, solar exists, heat pumps are out there, they work, um, and uh, uh, we, we're not we're not trying to solve a science problem. 
or technology problem. We're trying to solve a social problem and a business and market problem. Um, and that's where, um, you know, how do we develop um, the ability to work with landlords and landlords are business people. They gotta, we wanna look out for them too. They, they have a business to run and so forth. So how do we make this a win-win situation for the landlords and for the tenants uh, to move forward with climate um, action programs? And so I think really a lot of this is about being active, um, um, active community members um, and, and pushing uh, this notion. And I, I, I think from what um, I heard from Cedric in terms of, of um, the idea of, of um, staying active, we really appreciate that. We would look, look, look to you and others uh, to really be active voices to help move these new ideas forward. Um, and I would say that, as Andre said, we're probably, you know, at least a year, two years away from the CCA being a, a thing and a robust thing where we might have some monies to uh, spend on investment and so forth. But in the meantime, you know, there's still opportunities to work um, with your uh, tenant groups, uh, the EEA, EEAC um, P, uh, uh, members would be happy to join you um, and, and talk about the, these issues and opportunities and um, potentially brainstorm with, with you about um, some novel business or approaches uh, to approach landlords on, on how to solve, solve this issue particularly. And what's critical is really having the voice of the, of the, of the tenants and the community members um, as, a, as a voice that's really um, um, motivated and enthusiastic to drive the, the, that help drive the landlords uh, forward in this direction. But um, I think we could um, suggest that the, um, and I speak for myself at least, but I, I, others of the, of the uh, committee would be happy to, you know, join with you in those discussions in, in the community organizing that's involved uh, to sort of share our uh, understanding and, and, and ideas and help to make your voice um, more um, uh, uh, your, the ability for your voice to resound and, and, and work with the, um, and to approach the landlords or, or business uh, owners of the, of, the, uh, of the apartment buildings, if, if that's something that we, we, um, we would wanna do. So really appreciate that. Um, and, uh, and your willingness, Cedric and, and others of uh, remaining active in this, in this process, as Andra says, said, we're gonna be um, with the help of uh, uh, Lauren and Jim, um, really pulling together this action plan uh, sort of towards the end of the calendar year, I think, um, or I forget exactly what the time frame is, but give or, give or take, um, and having um, this, this group um, and our other working groups uh, to uh, really be active in giving feedback on that um, and, and involved in, in the finality of that um, would, be, um, would be a great way to stay active at this point as well as being then ready to continue uh, being active um, as we move forward and start implementing implementing the, this plan. Thanks so much, Dwayne and Andra. Um, so Andra, did you wanna add anything? Lauren, could I throw out an idea? Um, been doing research about different CCAs and how far they can go in um, involving residents. Um, we talked with um, the um, organizer at um, for an Oakland organization, Oakland, California, who um, offered to, to talk with anyone again about, you know, what the role of organizing her, her role is, um, her name's Jessica Guadalupe to Tovar, and she's the energy democracy, energy democracy organizer for the um, East Bay, that's where Oakland is, Clean, Ener Clean Power Alliance. And, and they played a really big role in making sure that their CCAs 
had that kind of accessibility that we're hoping for. So we got a lot of ideas from her. We could connect, you know, people to her. <laughs> Not everything has to come through, you know, the, the town mechanism it could be, you know, peer to peer um, as well. So throwing it out there. Yeah, really interesting thought, Andra. Maybe there's some opportunity for um, an event or, or further um, connections to be made there. So I'm actually going to pass it off to Gazit Kaya just to share a few closing thoughts if they're still available. And then um, I'll talk a bit about the, the next steps um, in terms of the, the plan development and how we'll continue to um, engage with y'all. It is a little bit of boisterous play over here, but um, yeah, just uh, I think we covered everything. Everyone had a lot of nice um, feedback. So I appreciate everyone sharing all of that. And um, and Lauren's going to share what the next steps are. Thanks, Kazi Kaya. Um, so sort of building off of what Dane and Andra have already said, um, after this next or this last round of task groups, it concludes, which is our, our last one is this week. Um, we'll be putting together a draft plan based on all of the great ideas and input that came out of these meetings, as well as meetings with other folks in town and other stakeholders in the community um, with the ECAC overseeing that process. Um, but then our intention is to connect back with the community leaders that have participated in this process to sort of ground truth our, our draft and say, are these priorities really reflective of what we talked about, of the principles and values that we discussed, of the big ideas that we came up with. Um, did we miss anything? Um, are, there, are there things that really need to be here that aren't yet? Um, and the hope is that the, the dialogue will be ongoing as we develop the plan and that community leaders will continue to talk to their friends and family and neighbors about what's going on and, and, and plug them into this process too. Um, so the plan is to present a draft plan to the community in the spring, um, and that'll be another sort of more formal opportunity to give input and feedback and comment and all of that good stuff um, before we finalize the plan. And the plan will be presented to the ECAC and the town council, or by the ECAC to the town council um, later in the spring. So, um, all that to say, just thank you so much for your participation. Hope that you'll continue to engage with us um, and we'll be in touch. Um, also, not just to send out notes and sort of the wrap up from this meeting, but also to, to go through some of these next steps and ways that you can continue to be involved. Um, and in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have more questions, you have more ideas, myself, Jim, Gazikaya, Dwayne and Andra, Stephanie, we are all available. We all want to hear from you. Um, so please don't be shy. Uh, we're always available. And um, yeah, just many, many thanks for spending this time with us. And with that, we will let you go and enjoy the rest of your beautiful Sunday. Hope to see you all again soon. Take good care. Bye, everyone. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yep, thank you.